A good morning. Welcome to the Coffee Break Podcast. We're here for another live episode as we record. And today we're going to be sharing business practices, ideas, and strategies like we always do while we enjoy our coffee break. I'm Chad Lingefeld from LockDoc Security. And today's guest on the podcast is the Fresh Prince of Ballantine, Jake Failing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we're going to get right into the conversation okay. right after this. We got so much to say. We got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, Jake, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to be here today. Really excited to to chat with you. Excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. This is uh, always a dream of mine to be on a uh, security uh, driven video and audio uh, show. So thank you so much. I'm glad that we could uh, knock one of those items off your bucket list. That's that's Absolutely. that's amazing. So you're coming to us live from uh, just on the other side of Charlotte, North Carolina, from uh, from from your your space there at uh, Movement Mortgage. So um, there, there it is. Jake space. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice. Well, like what we like to do is just to get to know you a little better. We have five rapid fire questions, unprepared, um, and uh, just get your your first thoughts of all those questions. So if you can if you can get ready for that. Uh, number one, what is the worst thing you ever did as a kid and got away with it? Oh my gosh! Oh, worst thing. You know what? I, I actually didn't get away with it, but I was telling this story the other day because my kid took the cards out of an SI for kids and brought them home from the doctor's office the other day. We've been spending a lot of time in doctor's offices and um, I'm a big rule follower. Okay. And I got caught doing that as a kid and my parents made me go all the way back. It was an A&P grocery store and they made me go back and return the cards um, and the people at the A&P were like, what even is this? Just get out of here, please, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number two. What band would you be embarrassed to admit that you listen to? <laughs> oh, oh, gosh. I mean, all of them. I, I, I am... Uh, I am the biggest fan of Top 40, so I'm all in on boy bands. I'm all in on uh, cheesy female pop singers. I listen to all of it on repeat, truly. Like, I, there, the list is too long. I think I've got, like, I can show you my playlist. It's like, it's like girls' jams, <laughs> and it ends in a Z, you know, like in college. Girl, <laughs> girls' jams, volume 37, and it's like all Kelly Clarkson and Pink and all that there you go <laughs> number three what food could you not live without oh man uh do, do ipas count is that a food <laughs> i guess it all depends on who you talk to okay all right that that works uh if you had to endorse a brand what brand would it be Ooh, local i mean other than movement because i feel like yeah, built yeah, very yeah. Strong beer. Uh, local brand i love uh the resident culture brand uh it's go back to beer brewery here in charlotte um, love what they do. Um, and then just national brand, you know, we keep our eyes uh, on a lot of folks, both from like a social media perspective, but then just kind of look and feel perspective. Like I, I, just, I, I love what Nike does. I, I could have stayed in the mint museum forever during the all-star weekend that the rap that they did there and how they turned the museum into basically a Nike showcase. is just like, that's how you do it, folks. It, not to get too far off track, but I was watching a documentary the other day about Unbanned uh, with the uh, Air Jordan 1s and the whole uh, story about uh, the Air Jordan 1s and Nike and how they turned uh, the, the band shoe that Michael Jordan was wearing into like the one of the biggest marketing campaigns. It, it was something else. They, they do an amazing job. Yeah, truly. Last question on, on that. Uh, how much does a polar bear weigh? A polar bear weight well depends. Are we talking North Antarctica or like the lower southwestern region? So if you talk southwestern region, they're larger. They're about 1.3 tons. North Antarctica, typically they're smaller. Uh, so it's more like a you know more like a black bear, like a smaller, slightly smaller version black bear that are about I'd say eight to nine hundred pounds. Very informative. Thank yep. thank you very much. I appreciate sure. appreciate that. Thank you for asking. It's it's good to bring awareness, frankly, to that region of the world. 
uh, and to, uh, frankly, an animal that doesn't get a lot of love. Yeah, so I, I, I appreciate your knowledge, extreme knowledge on the polar bear weight. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, let's get into into the meat of the podcast um, and to the conversation today because um, it's it's been interesting. I've been kind of an observer of your overall kind of marketing and branding um, over the past maybe year or so ago. So if I went back and thought about how I originally was made aware of you, I don't remember how. It was uh, somewhere in Instagram, and then I ended up finding uh, your podcast that you do with your wife called Date Night with Jake and Paige, where you interview uh, local um, fo- Charlotte folks and um, my wife and I listened to I don't know, three or four episodes on a road trip um, down to Florida one year and uh, just kind of kind of got into that process and then just been kind of following from afar and it's been very interesting to see see that path. So I'm interested to find out more of your story today um, and so I want to kind of jump into that. So I, I, I from the little bit of research that I did, uh, I think you went to a small little college um, in North Carolina. Had, had <laughs> I did. I did. I went to a small university uh, in the Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area, mainly the latter. Yes, I went to UNC Chapel Hill, go Heels, uh, graduated 02. My wife, Paige, graduated 01. And we are huge fans. Looking forward to the big game this weekend. All right. So you went through that, and your focus there was on was journalism. Is that correct? Or yeah. Yeah, broadcast journalism. Paige and I clearly were not interested in each other in college. We found out on our first date that we were in a class together of 20 people. Um, and I tell her is because she wore triple uh, XL sweatpants and hoodie to every single class with the hood pulled up over her head. And she tells me it was because I had a girlfriend throughout college. Regardless, we found each other. Um, but yes, broadcast journalism, I went more behind the camera route and she stayed in front of the camera. So you were involved in, um, if I remember correctly, some some Olympics broadcasting. Can you tell us just kind of briefly what that was about and what your kind of role was at that? Because that's, I mean, that's, uh, I would imagine, once in a lifetime type thing. Yeah, when I say behind the camera, that's what I'm, I mean more like media relations, public relations, communications, and now into the career I'm in now in marketing. But yeah, my first job out of school was a six month internship with the US Olympic Committee and everybody was coming off uh, the Salt Lake Games in 02. Uh, but living on campus there in Colorado Springs, that was the Rulon Gardner, Apollo Ono era. And just a quick funny story, my first day, they tried to throw me and the other public relations intern right into the fire. And they said, we each want you to write an athlete spotlight that we're gonna put on usolympicteam.com. They just started their website. And they said, here are the two athletes that are on campus right now you guys go and interview them they'll be in the cafeteria and they said we've got a 40 year old archer who is the u.s champion and who finished just out of the medals uh in gosh that would have been sydney and then they said and the other one is an up-and-coming 13 year old swimmer um who is supposed to be uh the next big thing i chose the archer because i wanted a more mature person who could give me a better interview and my friend uh julie ended up um, taking the 13-year-old swimmer who ended up being Michael Phelps. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Great you choices. You saw where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing choice that you made there. Um, so all, all of kind of those experiences, and you've, if I, if I, the research is accurate, you played around a little bit in that kind of sports broadcasting type stuff, and you're saying behind the scenes. So what, is, what does that mean, I mean, from an exposure standpoint? Yeah, first 10 years of my career was spent in sports, and that's what I thought I wanted to do. All my interviews, what do you want to be? I said I wanted to be the general manager of the White Sox, which now, as an almost 40-year-old, makes me cringe inside that young Jake was saying things like that in interviews. Um, But I went from the U.S. Olympic Committee to the USGA, working in corporate merchandising. That was another internship in sports. It's pretty much all you do for the first year. Um, Then I got my first full-time gig with USA Baseball. Um, back in North Carolina, did that for a year and a half. The USGA then recruited me back to run corporate merchandising full time. Did the 05, 06, 07 US Opens. Uh, and then right before the 07 Open, I should say, um, Paige decided she wanted to uh, focus on on air. And one of the opportunities she got was for the NBC affiliate in Raleigh. So I called my friends at USA Baseball back, not expecting them to have an opportunity. And turns out that they did. And it was just an unbelievable six years work for them and the International Baseball Federation at the same time because we were trying to get baseball back in the Olympics. Um, Failed miserably at that, did not get back in the Olympics uh, because the 
scumbag big leaguers. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. But no, the big leaguers wouldn't stop the season. They wouldn't uh, send uh, their top players uh, to the Olympics. So it was an easy choice for them until Japan got the 2020 Olympics and it's all about money. So they put baseball back in for 2020 because they'll fill those stadiums easily. There you go. So at all. I'm not, it's not, it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> it's very calm about it. The The right. question that I have about that is, is the exposure that you had with even um, the, the USGA and baseball in, in, cause you talk a lot about corporate merchandising, all of that leading up to kind of what you're doing now is that, is that built a path to that or is it completely two separate worlds? No, absolutely. So, I mean, what, what we're not even talking about in between. I spent four years in medical device, pharma, and biotech recruiting CEOs and uh, board of directors candidates. That's that's very natural important. transition. Yeah. Yeah, actually, no, of course. Um, you know, that was just, hey, with baseball, I was traveling internationally for literally some trips a month time and we were starting to have kids and uh it made a lot of sense for us and our family um and then the last two years i've been with movement um but absolutely those 10 years because in sports you know um i mentioned the interning like um sports you got a hospital like everybody sees how cool it mm. looks see all the famous players they see everything um but what they don't see is that people are working 20 hour days and i'll go to my grave to say that um there is nothing harder than working an operations job on a championship golf tournament um, because you got to do everything from rope and stake every single hole to all the volunteer parking lots. To, I mean, it's a, an unbelievable amount of work. And so um, while I'm not, you know, roping and staking movement mortgage, um, that work ethic and the ability to where I just the need to grab every hat possible to put on just to get the job done. That, of course, translates. So let's move into the more movement mortgage phase because this is something that, it, it, again, as, as just kind of a, a vague awareness of you, I'm sitting here going, looking at the movement mortgage marketing and the branding and the identity that's there, you, know, you don't look like bankers. You don't look like people that would deal with mortgages. And one of the things that I look at a lot because you know, in, in our industry, in the security industry, nobody wants to sit around and talk about locks and keys, um, cameras and, and key card systems, all that stuff. It's not, the, it's not the sexy, fun thing. And so you have to try to find creative ways to kind of make your brand appealing and to point out some of the other things other than maybe the products and services that you do. But the other weird thing that I think of, and, and, I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because that's a very, very open to do that. A mortgage is something that not a lot of people are doing regularly. So it's a, you're doing a lot of awareness for a, a customer that you may only touch one time or two times over a lifetime which is also very interesting in our world um, in, in some aspects you know, um, of, of relationship building. So it, how, how does that translate? How are you approaching that from, a, from a, a, a marketing standpoint of trying to change, I guess, the face of, uh, maybe for lack of a better word, bringing excitement to, um, into that industry that maybe is not really that exciting you know, as a whole? Yeah, so a lot there. Um, I think the headline is that you and I are in two of the non-sexier industries, and what we're doing is trying to make them look cool, right? How are we doing that? Fair, fair. Okay. Yep. So um, I'll, I'll admit, I've been here two years. I inherited an amazing brand. Um, so you know, all the stories of you know, you've probably you maybe read them. But Casey started this company in his attic after winning a Super Bowl with uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks, um, and he had a vision. And most companies, I would say, lack that vision, lack that brand identity. And so they're constantly chasing their tail, trying to build it. That was the foundation. Casey knew the why right out of the gate. Hmm. So we were fortunate to have a CEO who's actually got some marketing chops as well to help build that brand. So I inherited a, a really strong brand and I'm just trying not to screw that up. What I think we've done differently in the last year, and you know, I'm not familiar with your industry, but in ours, like, so the economy is on fire right now, um, but the one industry that's not as much is mortgage, the housing industry. And you know, over the last probably 12, 18 months, you could say it's inventory, lack of inventory, you could say it's rising rates, um, the cost of home, you know, more people interested in renting, whatever it is, um, it's been challenging for everybody in the mortgage industry. So in that um, 
in that type of an environment, we've tried to take what we learned around the corporate brand and extend that to personal branding. And yes, I mean, I didn't just get out of bed. We, we normally wear t-shirts to work, um, which is really nice. I, I don't have to think about that in the morning. Um, cause I already spent about 45 minutes on my hair and I know you, I know you do too, Chad. So don't, don't laugh too hard. Right. <laughs> You, you've got the same look I've got, man. You, you and I—it's <laughs> just there, man. You just get out of bed and it's ready. Yeah, I can see it. Um, yeah, so um, we focused on personal branding, and fortunately, and, and, and you know, I appreciate you—you you mentioned it before we start on. Like, I focus on my personal brand as well outside of this, whether it's the podcast with my wife, um, uh, public speaking things, stuff like that. And you know, I tell people if you follow me on social, you learn a lot about beer, donuts, and how to make fun of your children. Um, <laughs> and. Um, so I, I sort of walk the talk. So when I tell our loan officers like, Hey, you've got to work on your personal brand. Hey, you know what? You've actually got a clue on camera and you're really well-spoken. So have you thought about a podcast, things like that? They can at least look at me and not see that I'm, you know, standing up on this tower. Like you should do this. You should do this. Cause I've read a bunch of stuff. I'm actually doing it, you know, not just for myself, but also for the company. So I think that's, what's different, um, is, you know, we're not just a mortgage company putting out financial services information. We're a mortgage company that if you look real closely, we've sort of become our own media company too, uh, between the podcast, the blogs we put out, and then the fun, engaging content too. What does that do for you? I mean, because, and I, I mean that I agree with you, but I'm, I'm, no, I I'm asking from a perspective of what does that do? How has that changed things for Movement Mortgage, yeah. um, f changing your focus to that? Because I think that's a challenge for a lot of companies, you know? Yeah. yeah. So what it does is um, w when we do a good job from a corporate perspective, it lets our loan officers, one, they're our megaphone, right? But it lets our 1,500 loan officers look the exact same way, and not in a bad way, but in the sense that they can lift and put in the exact same content. So we aren't, we're almost 100% retail, um, and meaning we've got loan officers out in the field, and they are building their loan officer, or the loan officers are building their book of business uh, in a large extent through strong relationships with realtors. So you got a lot of other people out there that are straight up direct to consumer. You've probably seen Super Bowl ads and things like that. Um, and, and they do a good job. We build our business through those realtor relationships for the most part. And of course, we're keeping an eye on direct to consumer strategies and things like that. But, you know, with that in mind, what we say when we create content is that it's B2B to C. We want to give our realtor, uh, realtor friends, and uh, I got to be careful of my compliance language here, um, and, <laughs> and, and other consumers that we're, we're um, uh, going after, borrowers that we're, we're trying to attract. Um, engaging content. So our idea is that, hey, we're not creating this content for like, hey, look at movement necessarily anymore. We, we did that early on. Now we're giving, we're trying to create content that the loan officer can share and look like that subject matter expert, look like that thought leader, um, look like, frankly, that they created it themselves. So w with that, because I, I think I think you're hitting it on something very interesting. Where does that... Um where does that play into the kind of the overall closing of the deal? All right, because you've got, I think a lot of people, when they think about marketing, it's what is my ROI on, you know, okay, so you're doing this podcast. Can you track sales directly back to that podcast? <clears throat> And, and if I'm hearing you correctly, you're saying you're creating content as a kind of a, from a media perspective so that your, uh, your loan officers are now able to share content, relevant content with, with each other and with their realtor friends. And then that's kind of taking that down to the consumer. Yep. Um, and all of that, while that, that end of the line consumer, that one person that's buying the house for, for the next 10, 15 years is the one time that they're going to use that, that service right for a while so well, don't forget about refis the rate, rates are doing okay now okay don't forget about refinance. So, so you got refis but it's it's so you're it, it, is the perspective that you're kind of taking on is that you're creating an awareness to your brand for when the time is right because you're right. i mean how much of that is actually out there just kind of grinding out sales essentially 
So yes, we, we do want to create brand identity. That that is our focus right now. I mean, if you look at you know the the money we're spending on social media, the attention that we're we're putting in, all of our uh, content is really around brand identity and education. Now, the content that you're not seeing, um, because the other big piece of this is recruiting. You know, so the name of the game in our industry is going out recruiting loan officers, recruiting good leaders, market leaders, regional directors, whatever it is. Yeah. So we're trying to create more engaging content that's more internal comms uh, so that we can, you know, hand to a regional who can go in and, you know, play a video on their iPad or send a video in advance um, uh, to, you know, hope, hopefully grease the skids a little bit before they go in and talk to the person. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but. Um, yes, I mean brand identity is a big thing, but also just to help uh, recruit and also educate. So it's it's just an overall marketing of who this company is, what they're about, and when the time is right. You know, it's it's there's a lot of actionable things there, but when the time is right, here here comes here comes the customer. Where uh, what are some tra- some tactical things that you can say that that m- you've seen maybe even personally or from the movement mortgage side that you say these are some areas that you need to be focused on if you're a small business and you're really trying to get those marketing wheels going because you know you we talk about it a lot small business versus large business medium size not every every business has the ability to have a VP of marketing on staff that's helping to drive that a lot of, a lot of times it's the business owner or somebody on staff that's just kind of doing it as a part-time or one of the hats that they're wearing. So what are some things that you've seen that say, hey, these are some things you need to be aware of and focused on and, and start even if it's small? Yeah, I think that's the key um, because if you don't have the resources to you know, to have a person that's full-time dedicated to something like this and or maybe you're running the business you know, like, like yourself and, and you're also trying to build content, um, there's a real... Uh, chance, a real opportunity for you to go an inch deep and a mile wide. And look, I'm a <laughs> Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, I drink drinking the Kool-Aid in a big way. And anybody that listens to his content, which my guess is if you're doing this as a, a security advisor, you're definitely following him as well. Um, which by the way, plug for uh, 4Ds, Daily Digital Deep Dive. I don't know if you follow his stuff, but those are the best podcasts. Those are the best episodes that he does where he sits around the table with people like yourself and like me who are like, I run an insect um, company, you know, to to, uh, get rid of insects in your house. Oh, I run a garage down the street. It's basically all those industries that you and I are talking about right now Mm -hmm. um, that he gives that tangible advice to. But what I would say, what I tell people is focus on the areas where you hang out, focus on the areas where the barrier to entry is going to be low. So for example, if you feel like you maybe have always loved talk radio, maybe you fo- you find yourself calling in to like sports talk radio shows, you love to debate your friends around the table, like you're, you're good on your feet, you're quick with questions, all that kind of stuff, then I would probably direct you to a podcast. Now, obviously, it's easy for me again to like, come on and be like, you should start a podcast and then, you know, walk yeah. off the screen. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't do that. Like, yes, of course, that's a great idea. But if you are going to wake up and dread reaching out to six people on Facebook or Instagram to ask them to come on your show, if you're going to dread the you know 30 minutes you've got to spend on GarageBand or Audacity or whatever it is afterwards to clean it up, then you know that might not be the best bet. Switch over to social media. Um, you know, some people like I call out our CEO. He loves LinkedIn. He loves LinkedIn. He naturally opens LinkedIn. I see it, right? Mm -hmm. I see him engaging with people in his messages. I see him liking things. I see him commenting. That's not us. That's him. The other platforms, I'll just say that we are more involved. Sure, sure. (laughs) So, you know, that for him, when I advise him, I'm like, you know, where are we going to hang out the most? Where do you hang out the most? LinkedIn? Okay, let's lean into LinkedIn. Let's lean into content because more naturally, he's going to think of content that is not suitable for Instagram, that's not suitable for Facebook, it's suitable for LinkedIn. So I think it's Mm. finding those places where, again, that barrier to entry is low and then come up with one or two strategies um, to get your content going in those areas. And we could talk about each of those platforms if you want to, but I come at a more high level like, don't put a square peg in a round hole because you can get really lost listening to advice. So that, I think that's a very, very, very practical advice right there. You're saying wh- whatever you're comfortable with, if it's if it's that you're living on YouTube and you're you're hanging out in the YouTube comments, then then do it there. If it's right. LinkedIn, if it's Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it is. 
and find your comfort zone and let it slowly build from that versus trying to trying to do everything poorly. I 100% agree. I mean, like maybe you're a, a mom or a dad and you love doing videos of your kids and posting them on YouTube and you figured out how to tag things. You figured out how, you know, you know what pre-roll is like you've got, again, a clue around YouTube. But then you're like, man, but I don't even know where to begin. What yeah. I would say is, you know what? Set a goal for 2019. You're going to do 50 videos on YouTube. And you're going to freak out and then you're going to say, well, wait a minute, 50 video. I, I did five last week of my kids playing yeah. in the backyard. So let's focus on 50 videos. Let's calendar them out. Let's find 50 things you could talk about in the mortgage process. Here's what to expect at this stage. Here's what to expect at closing. You're going to want a HUD statement, uh, you know, when your taxes come around, like really quick videos like that. And then when you're done, I'm going to go. And by the way, you know what? All those videos could also live on Facebook, yeah, and they could also live on Instagram, and then their eyes are going to roll back in their head. They're going to say, "I don't have time for that." And then I'm going to teach them about automated social media posting tools that they can, you know. And, and so it's just one step at a time. Um, and frankly, I take the same advice, you know, with pages in my podcast. Like, um, you know, we want to put it everywhere, um, but there's only so much time in our lives to to do work, to hang out with our kids, and to do that. So. We try to be real intentional about where we put it. So in in that same uh, in that same kind of line. So it's it's developing content that's relevant and important to you, and then in a on a platform that you're already comfortable with or that you're already engaging with. It's interesting, like even from a marketing standpoint, because it, we all naturally go to the digital world. We all go to the social media, right. and and what I've you know seen in in this aspect is. You know the the old school. I'd say old school, but it's still a relevant thing. The the uh, the face to face marketing, uh, networking groups, and and all that stuff. Right, that's a whole other world. Well, but if you're well, not, that, well, that's the best. That's the best. Sorry, man. Like I should have started there. That is the number one thing to do. But I, some people I, aren't comfortable in that in that world, right? And so th- you you have to kind of play to your strengths. You you definitely have to play your strengths, but like let's not get it twisted at all. Um, face to face is by far the best. We say that all the time in here. Like, look, if you need a flyer or if you need a social media graphic to sell this loan product, then you're doing it wrong. Mm. So we'll create these things for you. And that's what, you know, we try to scale that to all of our loan officers, but yeah, the face to face, I mean, hopefully no one has to tell you that that's, that's the most effective way to do it. And then your social brand is basically backing up your face to face interactions. Yeah, you don't want to be a completely different person. I mean, I, I think that I'm kind of what you see is what you get um, when you when you meet me. Um, and, you know, I think that that's, there, there's a good way to bridge that. So, like, maybe, you know what, maybe you do need a printed material. Maybe it's a um, business card. Maybe you, you, a lot of people are like, who uses business cards anymore? Well, maybe if you use a business card that, you know, has a coffee mug on it or something like that to tell people that, like, hmm, well, they're into coffee and then they find out that you're coffee mortgage guy on Instagram and, you know, or coffee security guy. Um, and, you know, you go to the podcast and it's, or the, the video site and it's like, oh, wow, this is really good content. And I also learned that not just coffee or um, counterculture or some of these other places make a killer latte. And so I get to double dip, man. I, I learn about, you know, security and I, and I learn where to get the best mug. Yeah, most definitely. Bringing all those things together. So let me ask you this, because I, I, I want to be uh, mindful of your time. Uh, you mentioned Gary V already, obviously a, a big follower of Gary V. You got to spend some time at a, a conference with him. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the book as well, but you got to you, you were involved in a Gary V event here recently. Tell us a little bit about that and how that kind of came about. Yeah, that's, uh, look, I spent the first 10 years of my career in sports. Um, you know, I met my wife in New York when she was working at NBC and we were on SNL. I, I've been fortunate to be around, um, you know, some probably famous people, celebrities, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I almost lost it around Gary V. Um, yeah, that was about as, uh, I was about as, um, Fan girlish, fanboyish, fan kid, whatever you want to call it, as I think I've ever gotten in my life. I'm like, oh, um, yeah, hi, uh, hi, I am Movement Mortgage. I mean, I'm Jake. I don't know why I can't talk. Um, <laughs> he, uh, if you follow him, you know he's got a um, quite the mouth on him. Yeah, 
Um, and actually, interesting, yesterday he announced that he's starting an entirely new YouTube channel that's got no cuss words in it because uh, for kids, which is interesting. So his videos are going to shrink down to like three and a half minutes? <laughs> I know, I know. But yeah, uh, the, the event was called Agent 2021, um, and it was focused on the auto, mortgage, real estate, and insurance industry, so agents for all those, and basically how to uh, work on your personal brand. I mean, it was Gary V 101. Um, and I was asked to speak on one of the panels there, which is, you know, a huge honor. And, you know, they came to us, they're paying attention to what we're doing around branding. And um, it, it was a, it was an amazing opportunity, but, you know, being on the panel, you know, the speakers had an opportunity to have a quick meet and greet with them. And I figured if, you know, we're known for our t-shirts yeah. and, and I figured if I couldn't have fun with uh, the movement brand and t-shirts at a Gary V personal branding event, then I'm doing it wrong. So it was in Miami. We created two, themed movement shirts with Miami themes. So one was Miami Vice, one was the Miami Heat uh, jersey, if you're familiar with that. And uh, I walk up and in my seven seconds to him, I said, hey Gary, you know, I like stumbled through what I just said to you. And he looked at my shirt and he said, I love it. Just like that to my family. I was like, well, and that was the best day of my life. Sorry, Paige. Um, all of our children's births, uh, our wedding day, um, all just went right down the rankings. So that's so the the event with Gary V and, and essentially everything that you've just been talking about during this podcast is a, is a very good summarization of the book that you just ha- held up. So yep. I, it, that's been a playbook for you over the years, or is it that you kind of already been utilizing these things and you read this and it just kind of all kind of made sense? Yeah, and so for the folks that are listening, I held up Crushing It. Um, I read Crush It. I've read, you know, Jab, Jab, Left Hook. Um, uh, you know, it's – if you listen to his podcast or you followed him at all, he gives it all away. So I, I, I didn't really need to read the book. Um, I just did just to sort of crystallize everything. And there is some stuff in there. I actually listened to the audio book, which is really cool because – um, there's some things in there that aren't in the printed version, but yeah. man, I, I've been on Gary Vee since 2008. Um, I've been, I heard him speak at a internet summit. Um, I followed him when he was doing the wine stuff. So I've been a disciple for a long time and I've tried to build my personal brand and, and, uh, around that and what I've learned from him and bring that to movement as well. Cool. Jake, listen, I appreciate your time. One last thing. I know you've got some skill pop stuff that you guys do, which is uh, a really cool program in and of itself. And we don't have time to dive into that. Maybe at some point in time I can get um, skill pop on here to, to kind of talk about that. But you and Paige teach a, a course on public speaking and you've got one of those classes coming up very soon, correct? We do. Yep. Skill pop's a great uh, local organization in Charlotte. It's pop-up skills training classes. Paige and I teach a public speaking master class, which sounds super obnoxious. Um, but it, I promise it's a lot of fun and you know, you ask for tangible advice. That's what we try to do. And the best part is at the end where we get everybody to get up and do two or three minutes of their talk. And we, you know, Paige and I play good cop, bad cop. I'll let you decide who's who. Um, but they get to leave with good advice that helps them, hopefully helps them rock their next talk. Cool. So if anybody wants to get a hold of you, how would they, how would they get in contact with you? Social media, website, all that. Yep, at Jake Failing everywhere. It's J A K E F like Frank E H L I N G. Pronounced failing like I'm failing miserably. Probably at helping you wrap this podcast. Um, but that's me everywhere. Give me a shout. All right, Jake, we appreciate it. Um, for those of you who may be listening or watching for the first time, uh, man, we've got 28 other episodes uh, in the in the pipeline. Uh, you can find them all at lockdoc.net slash podcast, but it's available on all of the uh, podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, any of those. You can find them there. Just search for Lockdoc Security or the Coffee Break Podcast. It'll come up. Uh, subscribe to that so that you can get the, the new episode every Tuesday. We record one live every Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and then uh, it's published shortly thereafter the audio version as well so um, definitely appreciate your time today and your input and really good advice i think it's something that we can all take with us and uh, look forward to uh, chatting with you in the future jake have a great day thanks a lot chad to learn more about the topics discussed today and to connect with us online to hear all of the episodes available visit lockdoc.net slash podcast we got so much to say we got a podcast to make. We're sipping on lattes, and it's time for a coffee break. It's time for a coffee break. Oh yeah.
The Coffee Break Podcast is brought to you by LockDock Security. We'd love to connect with you online on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Just search L-O-C-D-O-C-I-N-C. 